And welcome to Let's Play Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I am the Max of You Trades, and this is a game that I've been getting suggestions for for a really, 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 really long time now. Basically, ever since I've played Persona, I guess because the way this game was sold to me is that it was, it's kind of like a fusion between both Persona and Phoenix Wright, kind of, in that I, it's all like very like cerebral and life exploring, but there's also like mysteries of which to solve, and I guess a courtroom and everything, so that's <laughs> that's what I know about that. Everything else I know about this game? Uh, not a lot. What I do know is that the uh, fellow on the right there is named Monokuma. I am aware of that much, and I know that he is a very evil creature? I'm not entirely sure what's- I mean, it's a bear. I don't know if he's an alien or something, or just a weird bear, but apparently he kidnaps a bunch of teenagers and throws them into a school and then makes them kill each other. So basically, trust no one because they might betray you and get attached to no one for they might die. That's basically <laughs> the gist of what I'm aware as far as the story goes. I'm assuming the fellow on the left is probably our main character. Just a wild guess. I don't know for certain. So how about we just start up this game and go crazy town on it? Would I- oh, I guess I do know that this game is actually pretty honkin' dark. So if that's something that's gonna bother you, you should probably vamoose on out of here. But considering the amount of suggestions and requests for this game I've gotten, chances are... Well, I mean, you probably wouldn't have clicked on the video to begin with. You, you probably know what we're getting into, so... As if it weren't obvious, for the most part, this is pretty much completely blind. I just know the bare basics of the general plot. So, let's start and see what all the hubbub is about. Yeah, uh, logic difficulty. Okay, I guess this is the difficulty settings. Uh, I'm gonna go with kind. That seems to be normal mode. I'm down with normal mode. Hello. Huh. Um. What? It's too late to back out of whatever this is, isn't it?
Huh. Well, I just bore witness to casual murder. And he seems pretty happy about the whole thing. All right, yeah, okay. Oh, is that the introduction, is it? Okay. Well, that's one way to start your game. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right, not sure how to feel about that. Nor am I entirely certain how that man turned into a skeleton by going through what he just did, but I definitely would see how it would kill you horribly. Um, okay. The music is significantly chiller, so I'm going to go ahead and assume we're probably safe for the moment, so let's... Let's just go. <clears throat> the massive high school towers over all the other buildings in the bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Although that is unlikely, as there is, I mean, the center of the world is full of magma. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable. A government-funded school of privilege. Okay. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. Well, that's not at all lofty ambitions. All right, with hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. Pretty much the only name they could have gone for. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. Like, like Wolverine? He's good at what he does. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students... ...is you? Was me. Alright then. Yep. Alright, that's definitely a main character if I ever done did see one. Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Makoto Naegi. Alright, we've got some casual voice acting in this. That's cool. Alright. Nice to meet you there, Makoto. You seem like a rather decent fellow. As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student, which makes me the prime hero candidate of this entire situation. <laughs> average on the outside, average on the inside. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. Alright, well somebody has a little thing I like to call the anti-ego. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm a psychic or mutant or whatever. Are those the normal prerequisites for this school? Like, if you asked me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show, they'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Even among the average, I'm completely average, so I can't even say I'm your everyday hero. Okay, so this game is already messing with me. Okay. <laughs> I say you're the everyday hero type, and he says, nope, not even that. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But you know, if I had any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. Okay. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still. Here I am, standing in front of the anything but ordinary Hope's Peak Academy. Alright. Well, then how are you here exactly? You seem to be going on ad nauseum about the fact that you shouldn't be here. So how are you? I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. Well, ordinarily, if it was just a prestigious school, I'd say, yeah, sure, you're overreacting to the whole thing. However, knowing how things are- knowing that murder is go up afoot in the near future, I'm gonna go ahead and say, maybe? It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I would feel that way. What you have to understand is, well, let me tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. Alright, go for it. Oh, okay. Hope's Peak only invites the students who are the truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic that there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. Alright, these people clearly have nothing better to do. So to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. And all I saw was talk about ultimate students who were way beyond your average high schooler. Prodigies and the like. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. Alright, that sounds kind of subjective. I don't know if that's something you can quantify. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. Okay, I mean, well, it's just... That sort of stuff fades. Whoa, that's an angry man. There's also the ultimate baseball star. Okay, that's that's more realistic. He was the cleanup hitter for the National High School champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Okay, at least that, that's more quantifiable as far as... Natural ability is concerned. I, I understand that. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. Okay. 
Again, gonna have to say that's a little bit of a difficult thing to quantify. How does one decide who the ultimate in fashion fashionability is exactly? She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines, so what every high school girl wants to be. Oh, she is what that is. All right. Okay, another angry person is like, adorable girl, terrifying dude. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader too. The scary thing is he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gang gangs everywhere love the guy. That's the type of person you want in your school then. Well, I'm extraordinarily confused. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, fanfic creator, and gambler. A very large hodgepodge of confusing occupations. Swimming pro, programmer, clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. Huh. Alright. I felt like a tame little house cat who wandered into a pride of lions. Well, hang out with the ultimate fanfic creator. I'm pretty sure he ain't going... He and or she, I, I guess I'm not entirely sure who, but oh, eh. You see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on no matter how much I looked. For some reason, the, the dialogue goes on its own. I'm not actually clicking. Do I click now? Oh, I guess so. That's weird. There's like a timer or something. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they be just average students like me without any talent or anything? I'm gonna say probably not. That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality. Y'all gotta stop ragging on yourself, dude. But beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? Yes, that is the question we are all asking ourselves. I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. Okay. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. Ah, okay, I suppose that's how it works. They spelled it out plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. Okay, again, vaguely knowing what's about to go down, I'm gonna have to say probably not luck. <laughs> Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. I mean, yeah, duh. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, which is extraordinarily large, I can't help but notice, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students at the main hall at 8 a.m. The meeting isn't for a little while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. And I took my first step toward the main hall. Okay, so far so good, I, I reckon. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says it's 7, 10 a.m. Man, you got up crazy early. The meeting doesn't start until eight o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. Makes sense nobody else would be here yet. I was so wound up, I got here way too early. I have plenty of time before the meeting. Just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around at the, the school. Maybe that'll help me calm down a little. Well, it didn't when I tried to get through high school. That, I'll tell you that much. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll let me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope Speak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least that was what I was hoping for. Whoa! What the? But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted, and apparently we're being attacked by Gygus. It was like some kind of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again! And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began, and how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized, the reason I was brought to Hope's Peak wasn't because I had the ultimate good luck, it was so I could experience ultimate despair. Okay. Welcome to Despair High School, otherwise known as any high school ever made. Uh, da, 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 da. no, we don't really need to save, I've only been playing for a few minutes. Womp womp, nope. Alright, that's certainly something. Ning. Oh. Mm -hmm. What? Where 
am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Alright, so am I to take it that he is recounting this story, like, from the future? The narration seems to imply it's from the past. Welcome to Hope's Peak Academy. Firstly, we'd like to explain the basic controls. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he was still talking. You can use the mouse to adjust your aim. If you aim at an object you can interact with, you can press the left mouse button and presto, you'll investigate that object. Use the Wasid keys to adjust your viewpoint, or you can press and hold the right mouse button and move the mouse around. Why don't you try looking around the classroom? Ooh, BKB? Alright, well, the music has certainly become significantly more ominous. Which is concerning in a few ways, I gotta say. Alright. Uh, first thing I can't help but notice, security camera? Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess they have to keep weirdos from just wandering in. I don't know how a security camera will accomplish that, but okay. A little odd. Oh, derp. Didn't even see that. That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? I do not know. An orientation guide. It's some kind of cheap-looking pamphlet, and there's something hard handwritten on it. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, the school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Alright, so I guess next, I don't think I realized it before, but are these, like, giant bolted windows? What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. And if I were to knock on it, bang bang. Yep, definitely metal. Thick too. Very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Yeah, that's, that's probably one of the more important things. Can I make a comment on the decor? Because I gotta be honest, this weird cheetah wallpaper print thing you've got yourself going here. Not the biggest fan. Uh, geez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really almost been an hour since then? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is, I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall and then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean this is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then if that's true, that just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows, it's like it's a prison or something. It's almost as if we have no escape. Mm, not good. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. You can leave the classroom by pressing the R key. Oh, all right. Handy dandy. Yes. Whoa. This is a little creepy looking. This is always kind of weird, too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now, I'll just head to the main hall. Uh, okay. Use the Wasset keys to move through the hallway. Hold down the shift key while moving to run. Oh. And a big ol' honkin' map. Also, you can press the tab key to bring up a map. Press the tab key again to close the map. How convenient. Uh, alright, so I'm heading to a main hall. What exactly would the main hall be? A uh, despair hotel. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing probably not. Despair Hotel? I guess it's a place for people to stay overnight, but anyway, I need to get to the main hall. Alright, so that's not it. Alright, so classroom, classroom. Uh, I guess that's where Monokuma dwells. Can I, can I talk to him? I wonder where this red door leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. Okay, apparently not. Okay, then we'll just have to keep on looking around. Let's see. Alright, AV room. Uh, danger, keep out, okay. That's always a very welcoming thing to see when you're in entering a school for the first time. Uh, uh, not entirely sure. Is this where I want to go? Well, I can go there. That much is proven. By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Ah! Oh, hey! Another new kid? Yes, that is I. I am that. Aren't you a colorful cast of people? My goodness. Huh? Then you guys are all... Yeah. We're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. So am I supposed to be making snap judgments based off their physical appearances? Because I can already... I'm, I'm already getting uh, some inklings on who might go nutsos. I know, I know people kill other people in this game. That much has been spoiled. 
But it's kind of the premise, so... So, counting him, that makes 15. Seems like a good cutoff point, but I wonder if this is everyone. I can't help but feel like 15 might be a little too... low for a building of this size. Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everyone who gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. That's what I was doing, actually. Alright, we got angry guy, fashion gal, pop gal, some kind of ice cream haired girl. We got ourselves a maid with some shifty eyes. Uh, we got a guy who's throwing a Seto Kaiba-esque vibe going on there. We've got some sort of punk. Some sort of, I don't even know, she looks kind of shifty. We got some dude with a huge, massive dread fro. Impressive. Got a tiny girl, a very fat guy. I mean, yeah, I saw these guys in the, the beginning intro, but still. Uh, we've got some aloof girl, some nervous looking dude, and what I believe, if I'm not mistaken, to be an extraordinarily buff woman? Th the names in the intro went by too quick. I'm not entirely sure who these are. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. Oh boy. Alright. Uh, how's it going? My name is Makoto. Sorry I'm late. A bunch of stuff happened, and then all of a sudden I was just asleep. Huh? Oh, you too? Mm. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm -hmm. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. You're the fanfic creator, aren't you? I can tell it from your weird... Like, I've seen comic relief characters, and you have all the makings of one. Yep, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Got it. Just a moment, there's something else we must address. Listen to me. Makoto, your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you are aware the meeting was to start at 8 a.m. sharp. To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you and you must accept your due punishment. Uh, okay. What? What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. That's right. Everyone just calm down. Why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? The hell? Now's no time for friggin' introductions. <laughs> Maybe, but it may be good to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we don't know each other's names? Yeah. That's a good point. Um... That, that gal's sweating bullets. Okay, so let's get introductions out of the way, then we can move on to whatever else. Sound good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So, I guess this is as good a chance as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up on the Hope Speak Academy thread online, but I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out! I'll start by talking to those five over there. Aim at a student and press the last mouse button to talk to them. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so keep track of how they go. Uh, ready? I guess I... I guess I'll do that. I guess we'll just go left to right. I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. All right, I'm going to need you to take it a couple steps back there, mister. You are... You are a very high-strung individual, aren't you? And you've got a wicked case of, like, crazy eyes going on there. Impressive eyebrows, though. Ultimate moral compass. I'm not entirely sure how that works. So that's Kiyotaka. According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community's Public Morals Committee. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of Ultimate Moral Compass. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what that means. He's the ultimate at following the rules? That seems like an extraordinarily vague thing to be an ultimate of. Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto, right? That's a good name, a strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. You hear me? And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Got it. Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it, right? Right? This guy is kind of annoying. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello there. Not that you'll remember my name anyway, but I'm Toko. Toko Fukawa. Man, you are sending all sorts of weird vibes towards me. Ultimate writing prodigy. Wait, so you're the fanfic creator? Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. 
Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men pole. Alright, that's a little odd. Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes and all of her books are instant bestsellers, which is why she came to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. Okay, so... Okay, well now I'm just confused. Alright, whatever. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type, what with her masterpiece being a romance and all. <laughs> What's your problem? What? It's not polite to stare, you know. What the heck? Hmm. Okay. Alright. Somebody's got a bit of a... Someone's got a bit of an esteem problem, I can tell. F filthy creature. No, I just thought... <laughs> I know what you just thought. You just thought you'd never seen such an ugly woman. You just thought it was so funny. No, that's not what I was thinking at all. I'm telling you! Don't bother trying to lie to me. I know it's true, otherwise you... I know you can't stand looking at me. Anyway... Well, your personality certainly makes me want to turn my head, I can tell you that much. Whatever, I don't really care. I'm used to it. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex. That was way off about what a successful author would be like. Well, to be fair, a lot of, of the most, like, extraordinarily, you know, famous authors were known for being a little bit reclusive. Um, I think his name was J.D. Selinger. That guy was really reclusive. Ernest Hemingway, well, not as such, was still pretty known for shutting himself off when it came to his work. I mean, it's not too odd. In fact, more public authors are generally a bit more, uh, are usually, a, you know, the ones that show themselves in the public more often is usually considered to be a little more strange. Also, is that a gigantic gun? That surveillance camera has what looks like a gun attached to it. There's no way that's a real gun, right? I'm gonna go ahead and say it probably is. All right, lady. Hi, I'm Sayaka Mizono. I look forward to getting to know you. Sayaka. All right, howdy. Ultimate pop sensation. Ah, all right. Again, definitely seems like a weird thing to be able to quantify. I mean, pop sensations can like, you know, come and go and they can sometimes burn out, sometimes they stick around. You can't really tell just from like, you know, looking at somebody. All right, well, whatever. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing. And that pleasant smell I can't quite place. Ah, good, yes, talk about how she smells. That's not weird. Sayaka Mayazono. When I saw her name in that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to be here on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to this school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. Okay. I understand that reading somebody's internal thoughts is generally going to make you say... You're, you're going to hear some weird stuff, but you might want to... Might want to dial it back a notch there, Makoto. I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. H did you hear me? Uh... I'm psychic. Huh? <laughs> Kidding? I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. Uh, hey, by any chance, now what? Huh? Yeah, it must be, I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto did... Just oh. hold on! Jeez, you guys, how long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Uh, um... S sorry, just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. Um... Okay, Mr. High Pants, how about you knock it down? Sorry. Sorry, Makoto, we can talk about this later. It sounded like Saka really had something she wanted to say. But it's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Well, that's not a death flag! <laughs> oh my god! Alright, well, let's, uh... Let's keep our wits about us there. Yo, the name's Leon Kuwata. What's up? Hello, man who looks like he's about to just... aggressively rip someone's skin off. Oh! Uh, you apparently grew your hair out. I recognize that name. Yep, okay. Yeah, you're the extraordinarily intense dude. You played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. And that's a pre the superb athletic specimen is. This fellow here. You? Seriously? Huh? Eh, what's wrong? N nothing, I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all... What, were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Well, that was the photo I was given. Shaved head? No, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty-looking, traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found the article and picture of you online, that's how you looked then. 
<laughs> ah, what? Well, oh man, you found that picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. What the crap? This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously. I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of national championship regulations. Seriously? But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Okay, so you're not a redhead. That's good to know. Hey, listen. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? You know... I don't like baseball. Like, at all. I've never gone to a single practice. He's never practiced, and yet he was still his team's star player. Yeah, that's... that's pretty much the definition of prodigy. Yeah! And as soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? <laughs> my only path in life is getting into music. You can have a... you, you can feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm gonna be a singer! So all I need is a songwriter and someone a guitar and we're set! How cool is This that? new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like, super cool to the max! I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all-star. Well, I mean, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you necessarily enjoy doing it. In fact, that's how a lot of people end up doing stuff. I mean, usually the, the bookkeeping type stuff, I mean, my mom's really freakishly good at math, but by god, she really hates doing it. Alright, and hello there, very large man. I am Hifune Yamada. What if you want to call me by my nickname? The Alpha and the Omega! I don't mind. I'm not calling you that. Oh! Okay, so I was right. So wait, fanfic creation mm -hmm. and... Literary creations are considered two different categories in this sort of thing? Aren't they both just writing? By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Hmm. Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. However... The words of such idiots mean nothing to me! I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. Alright, well, don't you have a little bit of an ego on your side? I am a soldier, serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconception about fan fiction. What, you mean that it's really creepy? I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nayagi, you would comp comprehend its greatness immediately, mm -hmm. for my work is filled with deepest meaning. What kind of meaning? Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our basest urges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. Oh. Okay, now to talk to those five people over there. All right, I, I guess this time we'll go from right to left. Hello, man with the world's most- water. Nice to fucking meet you. I just wanted to compliment your pompadour. You know, I'm gonna have to keep that potty mouth to a minimum, sir. All right, so you're the, the yeah, you're the gang leader. That much was blatantly obvious. Mondo Awada, huh? Which means... Yeah, he's the extremely angry dude. He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. Okay. I am deeply confused about how that gets you into a prestigious school, but... I mean, what, are they gonna, like, let in the ultimate hopscotch champion? Like, it seems so arbitrary. Um, nice to meet you, too. Yo. Hell yeah. I better be careful around him. One wrong word and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. And dee 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 doo doo. All right, well, that means he's either going to be a killer or he's going to be a subversion and not hurt anybody through the entirety of the game. I mean, it depends on how cleverly written this game is. And from what I've heard, it is in fact very cleverly written, which means my knowledge of tropes might need to be reversed if I want to be able to actually get anywhere inside the the mysteries of what's going to be going down here. Hello. Hi, I'm Junko Enishima. Charmed, I'm sure. Nice colossal bow. Ultimate fashionista. I don't know how you quantify that. Anybody would recognize this one. Well, I wouldn't had you not shown me this image prior. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. What? Huh? Oh, dude, did you just say that out loud? Come on. Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> uh, well, of course, those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? Yeah, you know, edited to hell and back with, like, computers and junk. Oh, so they aren't real. What can we do? I don't really see too much of a difference, if I'm being honest. 
If anything, this seems like an incredibly rude thing to say to her. Come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. Totally. It's totally normal these days to Photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'd be totally blown away by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh. So many dreams are getting crushed today. Okay. She still seems perfectly... She seems pretty pretty to me. All right, that's more than a little confusing. I'll take your word for it. The, the silent type, I take it. Uh, can I ask your name? My name is Kyoko Kirigiri. All righty, thank you. Nice to know. Oh. The ultimate mystery. She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Oh, but you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in the Hope Speak Academy thread. And I didn't see that there were students like me, one who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Uh, so what are you doing at this school? What? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invite here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. Why should I tell you? Eh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. <sighs> no, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked by chance like me, but... Perhaps she just really, really appreciates her privacy. Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything, no point in asking. That much is clear as day. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. Alright, I'm already getting some pretty strong vibes out of you. Y'all look like the type to... Whoa, ultimate programmer? Okay, did not call that. It's, uh, more... I was gonna guess, I don't know. I don't really know what I would have assumed. Like, I don't know. Ballerina, maybe? Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here. Nice to meet you. Huh? Eh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but... Have we met before? Uh, I don't think so. We just met for the first time. Which is why I said nice to meet you. Sorry. Oh, yeah, good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chihiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting-edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. Huh. Way to kick stereotypical gender roles up to the curve. That's not something you see too often. Rock on. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to her legion of fans, which apparently she has. Did not know that. Wow, you gotta be a wicked good programmer to have fans. Hey, so listen. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, she is really sorry. What, what are you apologizing for um, now? Well, just because you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? N no, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh? Lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> eh, I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why her fans are so into her. I mean, I, I guess if that's your type... The extraordinarily timid type, and... Yo, okay, hang on. Just making sure... Is there anybody else that was off camera? Nope. All right. Hello, ice cream hey, girl. I'm Aoi Asahina, but my friends just call me Hina. What's up? What's up? What y'all about? Ultimate swimming pro. Huh. Again, wouldn't have called that. Oh, oh boy. Uh, she said call her Hina. <laughs> I already forgot how to pronounce that. Uh, Hina. She's been raking, rec raking records, yeah. In every competition she's been in since elementary school. Whoa. Okay, sorry about that. For some reason, my recording software went all wiggity walk on me. That's a little weird. <clears throat> all right, what else? Anyway, she's been <laughs> raking records since elementary school. Interruptions. She's been chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is, without a doubt, the ultimate swimming pro. The combination of her ability, appearance, and, um... Proportions have been widely discussed online. Okay. That's rude. So, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Naigi. <laughs> oh, yeah. I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. It is that. You got it. Sure, sure. Got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Naigi. Makoto Naigi. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? You don't know. If you want to remember someone's name, you gotta write it on your hand three times. I've never heard of that before in my life. Mm. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You, you spell it exactly like how it <laughs> like it sounds. Mm. Uh. <laughs> well, I have no idea. 
I'll just figure it out later and write it down. Okay. Anyway, glad to meet you. Sh sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned is she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. That's certainly a plus. Oh, hello. Those four over there are the only ones left. All right. And, well, I, 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 st I guess I still can't make any presumptions, but that is clearly a skirt. So, hey, yo. I am Sakura Ogami. Yep, definitely female. <laughs> the ultimate martial artist. Yeah, okay, I can, I can see that. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I almost asked her if she was a guy. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that's... That, that seems like the, the way to get yourself murdered. The day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. But now I remember. She competed in martial arts tournaments in America and won despite being a girl. Getting all sexist up in the... Uh, she's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought in over 400 matches and never lost a single one. Hot damn. That's just impressive. That thread also said a bit more about her. Some call her Ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the primates. The famed, the famed missing link. Okay, so if there's anything I've learned about this... <laughs> if there's anything I know for certain, the internet in this universe is exactly like the one that's in ours. Full of perverts and extraordinarily rude people. Any incoming Hope Speak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now, if you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Wow. Internet. Mad judgy. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey. Hey, you. What? That? Uh, yeah. I snapped to attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke and prod at my body. Uh, what are, what are you? See. Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. <laughs> what a shame. You're no fit at all to act as my training partner. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. Seems like a good way to die horribly. Uh, hello, man. That looks a lot like... Byakuya Togami. Byaku Togami. Sorry, you just look and you look a lot like Seto Kaiba. <laughs> at least you're you're throwing that vibe at me. Let's see, ultimate affluent progeny. What? Uh, yeah. Uh, nice to meet you. That's the most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. But there isn't really anything I can do about it. Even amongst the ultimate students, this one is special. Uh, okay. Byakua Togami. He's the heir apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, the Kaiba, the, the Kaiba vibes are even more real. He's already started managing business operations and his own personal assets are, well, vast. His title of ultimate affluent progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. And that's everything I learned about him from the Host League Academy thread online. Come on. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away, I'm sick of looking at you. As Aura says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level, like a king in training. All right. Well, that's that, I suppose. Sub guy with the wicked fro. I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure, hero for short. Take it easy, yeah. I know I will. You know, when I first saw him, I realized he reminded me of somebody, and it only just now dawned on me. Dude looks like a lot. He looks like Dan from the Game Grumps. It's it's mostly the hair, I admit. Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hagakuri, known as Supernova in the Psychic Community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyance. Alright, I guess we're gonna learn whether or not that's a real thing in this universe or not. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. Could it be? Yeah. Okay, I give up. Eh, what happened? Serious. I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw what? A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with a skyfish in its mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But hey... I'm sorry, what? Okay, get real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. The hell are you going on about? We're not allowed to have a drink, we're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times, see, and... Well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. You know, at 18, you're no longer obligated to even go to high school. So wait a minute. He's 21. 21. Unless he was a... Unless he got held back three times in a row in his senior year. Whoa, how the hell did you pull that off? That's almost... In, that's almost impressive. Hello. I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenberg. Nice to meet you. Y'all kind of creep me out a little. You are the ultimate gambler. Huh. Okay. Celestia Luden, huh? 
Ludenberg. It is my name, but if you don't mind, I would prefer it you to call me Celeste. Celeste? Celeste? I'm not sure if that's Celestia. Celeste. I'm gonna go with Celestia. Uh, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Of course. Why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. Okay, so it's Celestia. I thought I, I thought that's what I read it. Okay, so she wants to be called Celeste. I think. That's what I'm gonna go with, Celeste. But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. Backstory! The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. So basically, you know, just just kind of don't don't mess with her. It's basically the point you're trying to get at. <laughs> I look forward to I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> that smile is beyond deceptive. I'd better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done. Huh? Even though they're all ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of uh something. We in the biz refer to them as quirks, Makoto. Hm. Okay, time to get down to business. There are there are Huns to fight. There's no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Um, well, you see, um, Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? I mean, seriously. Just after each of us got to the main hall, we lost consciousness. And when we came to, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But th that's just weird. And, and every one of us would get knocked out like that. Piece of shit! Exactly, that's why we're all freaking out. And that is an impressive rage face, dude. And that's not the only thing. You saw where all the windows in the classes and hallways were, right? You know, the whole bolted to the wall thing, yeah. But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that about? Plus, all my stuff's missing. Even my cell phone. Um... Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere either. And then there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch and machine guns. What does this mean? But there wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What is go- what's it doing there? Aww. Maybe we got caught up in some kind of, like, you know, crime or something. Is it? What, like like a, a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Hey, come, come on. on, don't think like that. Cheer up. I bet this is all just part of the school's horrifying orientation procedure. You know? Yeah, I'm sure that's it. So I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. I see. Uh oh, so you think they wanted to do something to surprise us? Uh, again, I feel like the guns mounted to the cameras really kind of give off an entirely different feeling. What the hell? Eh, well, if that's all it is, it's nap time for me. You know what I mean. I was up way too late last night, so I could use a little shut eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. This is a very bad call on their part, I can't help but feel. But then it began. Ah! Nope, 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 no, no, no. Do not, do not play that sound. Ugh, I hate that sound. It played every day at high school, like 13 times. Do not need to hear that. Testing, testing, mic check, one, two, this is a test of the school broadcast system. Well, that's an exceptionally annoying voice. Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Okay, well then. I mean, I guess I, I didn't really know what to expect when it came from a voice for this character, but... Wow, that's annoying. That voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I couldn't help but feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. Uh, to all incoming students, I would like to begin the entrance ceremony at... right now! Oh, okay. Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. Okay. That's all. I'll be waiting. Being creepy! <gasps> what the hell was that just now? Goodbye. Well then, if you'll excuse me. Hey, 
What are you gonna just take off like that? Could it be? Oh yeah, now I get it. This whole thing was just to get us all pumped for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> and thank God it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked if this was real. You know? All right, guess I'll head out too. Wonder what they got planned for us next. Huh. Uh... Man, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. I'd they have to go and kill the mood. Huh? Wait for me. I want to go with you. <laughs> that is that then. I'll see you all there. Anyway. Not that anyone cares, but I'm gonna go too. Everyone took off for the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I had before, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And it looked like I wasn't the only one, yeah. Uh, um, this doesn't seem right. This is bad. Yeah, that announcement was totally weird. However, Maybe, but just staying put one doesn't mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? I see. If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only, cho the only choice is to push ahead. How's Zen? I, I guess she's right? But still, I'm kinda- No, I'm really nervous! We don't have a choice. We have to go! They said to go to the gym, right? And do 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 Nope, don't see how that's necessary right now. Boop! Alright, so... Here's what I know for certain. I guess these fellows are perhaps the skeptics? I feel like I should probably... I feel like I should probably talk to them again just to be safe here. This is bad. What was with that announcement? It was like totally creepy. That much is definitely true. <sighs> Shit. Uh, what the hell kind of game are they playing? Um, I'm I'm guessing they're playing a visual novel esque puzzle solving game. Is is my is my guess? I'm guessing. <laughs> what the hell? Is this some kind of bad joke? Okay, well. Yeah, at least he seems kind of curious. Something weird is going on here, right? It's not just me. Nope, definitely not. Listen. I know how you feel, but all we can do now is check it out, right? Guess so. True, if we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice to push ahead. Yep, still very zen. Well... Are you okay? Is everyone okay? Yep, okay then, fine. Leave the area. Fazoosh. All right, gymnasium. That seems like... A gymnasium way over yonder, yo! There we go! Hey, come on! God, I had no idea this Hope's Peak Academy place was gonna be such a... Pain in the huspa! It really ain't that much different from the time I spent in Juvie. Now this place is even worse. Uh, um, why isn't there anyone here? Walking through the halls, I didn't see a single person. This is bad. Isn't that like... Seriously, not good? They're just trying to spook us. They'll take those metal plates down later. I'm sure of it. Huh. All we can do now is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Dude, shit. The hell? It ain't like I'm scared or nothing. Let's just get this over with. Hey, damn it. hey who's, where's whoever called us here? Mondo, stop. No running. Well, then. I too shall go. <laughs> Alright, well that was an incredibly unpleasant noise. Thank you for that game. Okay, time for some more tutorial! Okay, you can press the tab key to observe the room you're in. Observing will display what people and objects you can interact with. Sorry for the late notice. Uh, okay. Ah! Okay, pink means people, blue means, I guess, object. Fair enough! Dot, dot, dot. Total silence. For whatever reason, she's the only one managing to stay calm. Maybe I'm just imagining that. That definitely seems to be correct. Where are all the other students? Why are we the only ones here? I do not have the slightest. This is bad. Totally getting a bad vibe right now. Yep, me, you and me both, sister. All right. Let's see, a display case. There are all kinds of trophies and plaques inside. Of course, all the students who go here are ultimate, right? So this is probably just a tiny fraction of all their awards. I suppose. Okay, and there's this. The school has a lot of TVs. They couldn't just all be for that weird school broadcast, could they? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say probably? Alright, guess I can go in. Bada boosh. Still filled with uneasy dread, I did what the announcement said and went to the gym. And I saw what was waiting for us there. Okay. Oh, it really does look like an entrance ceremony. Yo. See? Told ya. It's totally normal <laughs> entrance ceremony stuff. I mean, this particular room doesn't seem too peculiar, but that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't disvalue the weirdness from earlier. Just, just saying. 
But in a way, that just emphasized how completely not normal all of us were. Hey there! Howdy! Hello! Is everyone here? Good! Then let's get things rolling! So, Monokuma, are you going to be fully voice acted this entire game? Because I'd really prefer if you stopped with the talking thing. Oh, hello. Teddy bear? Well, that's sure one way. That's one way to make an entrance. I'm not a teddy bear. Well, you sure look like one. I am Monokuma. It's like monochromic, you see, black and white. I, I see what you did there. And I am this school's headmaster. I find that hard to believe, but also knowing enough about you, I'm not going to question that. It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Right before my eyes, it was... What I was seeing was... It was utterly incomprehensible. He's a talking bear. Nice to meet you all. Uh, howdy. Such a bright voice and carefree attitude was completely out of place. Not to mention half of him looks like a horrifying demon monstrosity, so... And all that anxiety I'd been carrying with me suddenly transformed into outright fear. <laughs> that teddy bear can talk. Calm down, I'm sure there's just a speaker inside it. Hey, come on now. I told you already, I'm not a teddy bear. I'm Monokuma, and I'm your headmaster. Say what? Could you please stop yelling? Seriously, man, calm down. It's probably just a remote control toy or something. How dare you compare me to a child's plaything? You've cut me deep, deeper than the Mariana Trench. My remote control system is so complex, even the folks at NASA can't recreate or even comprehend it. Ah, but don't make me uh, don't make me say stuff that might destroy NASA's dream. I just couldn't bear that. Yeah. Bear? That really? You are unfortunate. Hmm. Now then, moving on, we really must hurry and get started. Come on. Giving up already? No other stupid bear puns? Now then. Quiet down now, quiet down. Ah, okay, so. <laughs> he has abandoned the gag. Good morning. <laughs> We're all kinda really stuck on that. Everyone, stand at attention and bow, and good morning! You hear me? Good morning! You don't have to say it back. Now then. now then, let us commence with the most noteworthy and memorable entrance ceremony. First, let's talk a bit about what your school life here will be like. Now, uh, make no mistake, you few students, uh, yeah, uh, so full of potential, represent the hope of the world. And to protect such splendid hope, you will live a communal life together solely within the confines of this school. Everyone will live in harmony together and adhere to the rules and regulations of the school. Huh? Ah, now then, regarding the end date for this communal life, there isn't one. In other words, you'll all be here until the day you die. Such is the school life you've been assigned. Yep, all right. So, uh, things kind of went, it's kind of interesting. Things started out normal, became weird, and now we've just kind of moved on to full-on bonkers. Usually there's another step or two in between those two, but uh, I guess this game has other plans for me. What did you just say? Until the day we die? Yep. Oh, but fear not. We have quite an abundant budget, so you won't lack for all the common conveniences. Hold on a second. That's the least of our worries right now. Hmm. Yeah, what the hell? You saying I have to live here forever? You're screwing with us, right? It's true. I am not screwing with you. I am no liar. Of that, you can be 100% sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, how? Do, what, what do I? What? What do you? What say you to the notion that that itself is a lie? Uh huh. Ah. And just for your information, you've, you're completely cut off from the outside world. So you don't have to worry about that dirty, dirty land beyond these walls ever again. Cut off. So all those metal plates all over the school. Yep, keeping us in like a prison. They're there to keep us trapped in here? That's exactly what they're for. No matter how much you may yell and scream for help, help will not come. He's, he's just digging right into there with the creepy. So with all of that in mind, feel free to live out your life here with reckless abandon. Hey, come on. Come on, what the hell is this? I don't care if the school or whatever else is behind it all. This is just a really bad joke. Yeah. Damn you. Cut this stuff out. It isn't funny anymore. You keep saying this is a lie or a joke. A bunch of skeptics, all of you. What are you gonna do? But I guess you can't help it, huh? You all grew up at an age where you're taught to doubt your neighbor. Well, you'll have plenty of time to find out whether or not what I say is true. And when that time comes, you'll see with your own eyeballs that I speak the undeniable truth. Most the exceptionally creepy and more than a little bit disturbing truth. 
Having to live here forever would be quite the problem. What's this? Come now, what's the matter with all of you? You decided of your own free will to attend Host Peak Academy, didn't you? And now, before the entrance ceremony is even finished, you've already decided you want to leave? Hey! Oh, um... but you know, I guess I did forget to mention one thing. There is one way for you to leave the school. And why do I get the overwhelming sensation that he's about to drop the ultimate bombshell? <laughs> R really? Actually... As Headmaster, I have crafted a special clause for those of who you... Those of you who would like to leave. I call it the Graduation Clause. Now, then. now, let me tell you about this fun little rule. As I mentioned, in order to maintain an environment of harmony here, we rely on a communal lifestyle. And if someone were to disrupt that harmony, they and they alone would be allowed to leave the school. That, my students, is the Graduation Clause. What? What do you mean by disrupt the harmony? <laughs> well, you know, if one person were to murder another! And if I know anything about cabin fever... Yeah. Yeah, that's about to happen. M murder? Yes, indeed. Stabbing, strangling, bludgeoning, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting. How you do it, it doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Give it all, give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst way possible. A chill shot down my spine. You must kill someone if you want to leave. As soon as I heard those words, my blood went cold. I bet that got your brain juices flowing. Beats the heck out of a human catching a salmon, huh? What? Hang on, wake up. Brain juices beats the heck out of a human catching... I don't understand what that means. Like I said before, you guys are the hope of the world, but you know, taking that hope and seeing it get murdered creates a darkened shadow of despair. Extreme! And this is Despair High School. Yeah, all right. I'm, I'm kind of getting the whole picture here. And I just find that so darn exciting. What the hell? the hell are you talking about? To kill each other is... it's... Huh? To kill each other is to kill each other. I'm sure there's a dictionary here somewhere if you need it. What are you saying? We know what it means. That's not the problem. Why do we have to kill each other? Hey, yeah, stop blabbering on with all this nonsense. Just let us go home already. Blabbering? 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 What do you mean blabbering? Stop blabbering on about blabbering on! My god, that voice! You guys just don't get it, do you? Let us go, let us go! You keep on saying the same thing over and over and over and over! Even though we never actually said that, okay? Listen, from this moment on, this school is your home, your life, your world, got it? Yahoo! And you can kill as much as you want to kill, so go ahead, go on a kill, kill, killing spree! <sighs> Alright, come on, how long are you gonna keep this up? Hmm? Eh? You know? You got us, okay? You scared the hell out of us, so you can go ahead and reveal the trick now. Huh? Reveal the trick? Right, yeah, because, right? I mean, you know, this is all some kind of tricking all right, so, uh, like... Dude, shit. shut the hell up and get out of my way. Shoving Hero aside, Mondo placed himself in front of Monokuma, his voice rumbling like thunder. You're fucking dead. My goodness. Listen up. This stuff's gone way too far. What the hell kind of joke is this? What's the matter? Joke? What, you mean like your hair... Oh, snap! You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, credit where credit is due. That's kind of funny. Mondo roared out, and then there was a sudden boom. It was the sound of the floorboards as he kicked off and launched himself into the air. He flew at Monokoma, fast and straight as a bullet. He locked onto his target. Oh boy. Gotcha, you little piece of shit. I don't know if you're a toy or a stuffed animal or whatever the hell. Either way, I'm gonna rip you to fucking shreds. I feel as if it might not be so simple. What? Violence against the headmaster is in violation of school regulations! Shut the fuck up! Let me out of here, I swear to Christ! My goodness! Y'all might want to not be holding on to that, because I think he's about to go kerbloomy. Hey, damn it! What, no smart ass comeback this time? Piece of shit! Stop that goddamn beeping and say something! Watch out! Yeah, I'd, I'd get rid of it. Huh? Eh. Hurry up and throw it! I don't know if her ferocity stunned him into silence or what, but without a word, he did what he was told. He threw Monokuma, and as soon as he did... Yep! That's the telltale sign of an explosive. The hell? What the? That sure as stuff wasn't a joke. It blew the hell up! There was a painful ringing in my ears, and I could smell gunpowder. Explosions might happen all the time in movies or whatever, but when it's in real life... Never seen anything like it. Not. But, you know, this means that the teddy bear's been destroyed, right? Hey! 
Oh, of course not. I told you, I'm not a teddy bear, I'm Monokuma. And he has returned. Ah, there's another one! D damn you! You son of a something or another, you seriously tried to kill me just now! Of course! Oh yes, I was serious about trying to kill you. You did violate one of the school regulations, after all. I'll let you off with a warning this time, but you'd better be careful from now on. Any naughty boy or girl who violates my rules won't get off with just a little swat on the butt. This is bad. D does this mean that there's, like, a bunch more of you around somewhere? Yep. Monokumas have been placed all throughout the school, yes. Plus, don't forget the surveillance cameras installed everywhere. And if you're caught breaking any rules, well, you all just saw what happened, right? <laughs> Explosions happened. Yeah, I saw. And I won't be so forgiving with my punishment next time, so don't let it happen again. That's not even punishment. That's just wrong. Well? Now then, lastly, to commemorate your joyous entry into our school, I have a little something for you. This is our official student handbook. Pretty cool, eh? As you can see, it's fully digital, so naturally we call it the e-handbook. Mm, yes, well, moving on. <laughs> Ain't nobody got nothing to say about that noise. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. Also, it's completely waterproof. Splash it, wash it, drown it, it'll keep on ticking. And thanks to its space-age design, it can withstand an impact force of up to 10 tons. Very resistant. It contains all of our school regulations, so make sure you can review them thoroughly. You guys... You'll hear me say this a lot, but any violation of school regulations will not be tolerated. Shing. Rules restrict, yes, but they also protect. Society, for example, would be utter chaos without laws. Tragically, that's not inaccurate, but still, doesn't make this whole situation any less, you know, absolutely bonkers. Yes, indeed! The same thing applies here, which is why it's crucial we have strict punishment in place for violators. Namely, the horrible death of the, uh... The perpetrator, as it were. Okay, well, that brings our entrance ceremony to a close. Bye. Please enjoy your abundantly dreary school life, and see ya. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. And with that, he was gone, leaving us all in a state of shock. So, guys, how would you define what we just experienced? What the what? I don't understand any of this. We have to live here forever or kill? What just happened? It is all very... Very compl complicated, I, I, I guess I do have to say. Calm down. Everyone, we just need to calm down. First, let's take a second to summarize everything we just heard. Based on what Monokuma said, we essentially have two choices. Choice number one is that we each stay here, living a communal life together until the day we die. And the other choice is... Indeed. If we want to get out of here alive, we have to kill someone, right? That's... But killing someone, that's... <laughs> we were abducted out of nowhere and stuffed into this place meant to look like a school. And now we're supposed to start killing each other? This is like some Hunger Games level of nonsense. This is... What is this? Ridiculous. A lie is what it is. All these ridiculous things we've heard. This all has to be fake. Hmm. Right now, it doesn't really matter if it's real or fake. Whatever. What matters is... So in other is there words, anyone here who's seriously considering all this? To that, nobody had a response. Keeping quiet, I looked around at the others. They all stared at one another, trying to gauge each other's, each other's thoughts. I could almost taste the hostility. And that's when it hit me. I realized the true terror hidden within the rules Monokuma had laid out. You must kill someone if you want to leave. Those words had planted vicious thoughts deep within each of us. Each of us became suspicious of everyone else. We were forced to wonder, is someone going to betray us? And that was how my new school life began. This school which had come out of nowhere to raise my hopes so high. It's not a school of hope. It's a school of despair. Oh! <laughs> Surviving students, 15. Ominous.